When we're hunting for waves these days, the day starts well before light. Um, I live in town, so we have to get on the computer and we'll check the swell boys and the, the models and the, the weather. Um, we have a look at the swell graphs and see what's happening, what the swell's like, what the wind is doing. And we'll know before we even go to the beach exactly um, pretty much what's it like. Adventure for us because we didn't, we'd never heard of, we didn't even have a name a lot of the places, you know, we didn't know what was over the next hill or what surf would we'd find around the next bay or, you know, so there's a lot more adventure in, in those days. These days when we're looking for surf, we're looking to get the, the biggest, hollowest waves that we can find, um, preferably without too many people. It's often we're surfing before work, so we get in there, uh, get as many really good quality waves as we can, and then um, just head off to work. lots more surf, you could see it. So we, we, we'd go walking, well, actually walking was probably the most thing we did, we'd, we'd go drop off at a car park. We were more into looking for surf spots and, and making tracks. There's uh, so many more people surfing here and so many more people getting around, there's a lot more impact. So it really is important uh, when you're surfing down here to just approach it with a really a minimal impact um, in, in your mind. Like, go use the right car parks, um, go use the tracks, stay off the sand dunes, leave your pets at home, um, just so everyone has a chance to enjoy what, what you have. You, you wouldn't go out just to purposely do damage to the bush. You would, you would 
you want to get to A to B and you take the path of least resistance, I guess, and just do whatever you was, was you did.